All right, welcome back. We've got one last example here on collisions. In this case, it's an oblique impact example. So we've got um, two bodies here, A and B. They're different masses, 300 grams, 450 grams. Um, they're coming in at different angles uh, to this plane of impact that they strike on. When we look at the line of impact, A is coming down 30 degrees uh, with uh, relative to that, if you look at the angle that way. And, uh, and B is coming in at 50 degrees, you know, off that horizontal as well. And you'll notice here we have E is equal to 0 0.6. That is the coefficient of restitution. So this is neither perfectly plastic or perfectly elastic. It's somewhere in the middle, and uh, we're going to be using that later on. So the first thing that we want to do here is we want to write VA1 and VB1 in their component forms. So we can really do that easily with some sine and cos functions. So I've just indicated also here the directions. Obviously, um, positive magnitude means it's going in line with the positive axis. And if it's negative, it is going opposite the, the positive direction there. So to get started uh, with this problem, the first thing that we want to do is we want to do the conservation of momentum in the x direction. So basically, this is just the momentum before is equal to the momentum after. And in the x direction, that means we have ma times va1x. Right, the x component of the, the velocity of a plus m b times v b one x. So that's the momentum before of our system. Our system includes both of the, the masses that are in the, uh, the collision. And the momentum after is going to be m a v a two x plus m b v b two x. Now, because we just calculated the x component of VA1 and VB1, we can fill this out. And then we can simplify to find that the left side is 0.093 kilogram meters per second. And that value, 0.093 kilogram meters per second, is the momentum before of our system. It's the momentum of our system before impact. And it's got the right units for that, kilogram meters per second. But what we can do in this next step here is we see that kilograms is showing up in each term. So we can divide them out for now just to make it a little bit cleaner. And we are going to be coming back to this later for some substitution, so I'm just gonna multiply each term by 0 0.4 so we can isolate for B2x. So that gives us 0 0.2325 meters per second is equal to 1.25 VA2x plus VB2x. All right, so we're going to come back to that in a second, but for now, let's switch to looking at the coefficient of restitution because we have two unknowns and we need another equation to solve for the other unknown in the x direction. So the equation for coefficient of restitution is E is equal to VB2x minus VA2x all over VA1x minus v b1x. Right, so it's the ratio of the relative velocity of separation of the objects after impact over the, um, the relative velocity of approach of the objects just before impact. Now it was also given to us in the problem that the coefficient of restitution is equal to 0 0.6, so we can fill that in. We have 0 0.6. Uh, the top is still unknown, so we have b2x minus v a2x, and we're over the uh, the numerator here, so we have the a1x is what we calculated to be 1.73 meters per second minus um, negative 1.93 meters per second is what we calculated for it before right here. So 1.73 plus 1.93 times 0 0.6, that gives us... 2.196 meters per second is equal to v b2x minus v a2x. And let's just rearrange what we have here so it's isolated for v b2x. So we have v b2x is just equal to 2.196 meters per second plus v a2x. So let's copy this and we'll paste it into the other expression we just had right there. So let's rewrite it out. We're gonna need a little bit more space here. So we have um, 0 
two, three, two, five meters per second is equal to 1.25 VA2X plus VB2X, which was 2.196 meters per second plus VA2X. So let's just move that up as well. So there it is. And again, that everything that we just put in there in the brackets is, is, is VB2X. So this simplifies, we can uh, rework it to get negative 1.9635 meters per second is equal to 2.25 VA2X. And then we can solve for VA2X uh, of being negative 0 0.873 meters per second. And that's a negative, so it means it's going to the left. Now we can take this value and we can plug it right back into this expression here. We're going to drop it in there. So let's rewrite this. I'm running out of space, but I think we can make it fit. So we have 0 0.2325 meters. You know, I'm going to do this in a different color so it's really clear. 0 0.2325 meters per second is equal to negative 0 0.873 meters per second plus VB2X. All we have to do is just add 0.873 to both sides and we're going to find that VB2X is equal to 1.324 meters per second. It's positive, so it's going to the right. So we've just found the X components of A and B after impact and as to not lose them i think i'll just um rearrange the side over here and make them fit so we can write down all of the velocities we had before impact and all of the velocities we have after impact so we've got va2x in there and we've got vb2x what we need to do now is apply conservation of momentum in the y direction and we can actually do this on an object by object basis because momentum is preserved for each ball um, because there's no impulse acting in this direction for either of them. You know, they impulse each other from side to side. You know, that impact happens across the plane of impact. It's a horizontal impact, basically. Um, but as they, as they bounce here and move on, there's actually no change. There's no, uh, there's no change in their momentum. There's no vertical impulse acting on either of them uh, that's in line with the plane of act impact. It's all in line with the line of impact. So for that reason, it makes the analysis really easy when we have momentum before equals momentum after, then for mass A, we have MA VA1Y is equal to MA VA2Y. And because the mass is the same, the, the Y component of the velocity is the same as well. So VA1Y is equal to VA2Y, which is equal to negative 1.00 meters per second, so that's going in the downward direction. We have the same thing for uh, object B. MB times V B 1Y is equal to MB times V B 2Y. Again, the mass isn't changing, so neither is the velocity. So we have V V 1Y is equal to V B 2Y which is equal to 2.30 meters per second, and that's positive, so it's in the upward direction. So we can record these here on our list on the left-hand side. So this is negative 1.00 meters per second, still down, and this one is the same, 2.30 meters per second, still going up. All right, so we have the x and y component of each of the final velocities of each of the objects. So let's just kind of plot on um, the direction of the actual velocity, like the overall uh, velocity of each one um, right here. So for A, we can just sketch on the x component of its final velocity. Um, let's put it to about here and label this. This is negative 0 0.873 meters per second. And it is, it's, it's y velocity is negative one, so minus one, something like that. All right, so that's minus 1.00 meters per second. So its actual velocity, not in component form, is going to be something like this. It's going to be v a2. 
We can do the same for B. We can sketch on VB to the X component. It's going to be out here somewhere. Uh, this is 1.324 meters per second. And then VB to Y, the Y component of it, it's going to be a bit bigger. It's up there somewhere. Uh, it's going to be 2.30 meters per second. So then if we connect those, the X and Y components, then this diagonal here is VB2 overall. So we want to calculate those, and we also want to calculate the angle here. So let's call this angle theta and this angle alpha. And we can do really simple um, trig stuff here. Uh, the hypotenuse of the you know, right angle triangle is just equal to a squared. Well, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in this case, um, negative 0 0.873 squared plus 1 squared. We take the square root of that, and that's going to give us VA2, which is 1.8. 33 meters per second and if we do the same thing we take the square root of 1.324 squared plus 2.3 squared that gives us 2.65 for VB2 and then for each angle whether it's theta or alpha um, it's just equal to the tan inverse of the opposite over adjacent side so if you take the tan inverse of 1 divided by 0 0.873, we're going to get that angle of 49 degrees. And you have to be, you know, kind of careful. I didn't include the negative sign there because it's not really necessary to think about. You just have to draw the angle in the same way that you see it. So this is 49 approximately degrees. And for VB2, we take the tan inverse of 2.3 divided by 1.342, and that gives us approximately 60 degrees and again just draw it like you see it so it's 60 degrees up like that so that pretty much concludes the problem um, we found VA2 and VB2 again those are the final velocities of each of these objects after impact and uh, not only did we find them you know in component form but we really showed that we knew what we were talking about by finding the actual magnitude of the velocity and the direction, you know, that it's going, um, you know, measured off of the line of impact. So guys, thank you so much for sticking through and watching that whole video, and I will see you in the next one.